special guest with us today before I introduce her and our co-host. I am Coach Mac, the founding health coach of Running With Bacon, where I help women feel like themselves again, one small step at a time. And our co-host Renata is back with us. Hello, everyone. I'm Renata, intuitive nutrition coach with Nourish with Renata, and I'm here to empower women to nourish their bodies, minds, and spirits. Yes, so good. And like I said, our special guest, we are joined by a client and a good friend of both of ours. Her name is Mary Hopper. Hi, everybody. I'm Mary. I'm the author of a book called Lighten Up Your Life and working on my second book. And I am a retreat host. So the Slowdown Retreat is a retreat that I like to host. So... <laughs> So if you're good, interested, yes. let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that Mary does is pretty much gold. So if you don't know about Mary, oh. now you do and go find everything about her stuff. We'll put it in the description box below. But Mary came to us today with a question. So without further ado, Mary, go ahead. Yeah. So I have been a client of both of yours and have gained so much knowledge and um, tools and tips and all the things to help me live my healthiest, but life gets hard sometimes. So I want you guys to both talk about what does a, first of all, what does a typical day look like for each of you health wise? Like what are the things that you're ensuring that you're doing, especially when things get crazy? Renata, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? <laughs> um, you can go first. I would love to hear about your day actually. No, oh, so glad you guys asked. So my day typically starts out with, because I don't have kids, I just have a furry kid, uh, starts out with taking care of her. But luckily for me, that includes taking her for a walk in the mornings. So most mornings, obviously, unless it's rainy or really snowy and gross here, most mornings I get the chance to start my day with some movement with, by taking her for a walk. So that is something that whether or not you have a furry child or not, you can find some little ways like that to work it into your day. It doesn't have to be a 30 minute walk. It can be a walk around the block. And if that's the way that you want to start your day, you for sure can do that. Another thing that I do I when I get back from our walk is when I start my work day. So working for myself, it gets really challenging sometimes to not just blow off the work day and say, hey, <laughs> I can do whatever I want. <laughs> so I still have my work day fairly structured. And before I even sit down at my desk, I actually fill up this giant bubble cup. It is actually as big as my head. Um, so I fill that up before I sit down to start working for the day. And then I actually, on my lunch hour, so if you know me, you know I am a Real Housewives junkie, mm -hmm. and I would make my lunch, because I actually, I pretty much only eat lunch and dinner, so breakfast, not an issue for me, but so I would make my lunch, and then I would watch an episode, a DVR episode of Real Housewives for lunch. Well, since getting a dog, I have... <laughs> I have become less selfish and I have sacrificed my Real Housewives episodes, most of them. And I will take the dog again, either for a walk or I'll do some training with her outside. And then actually after lunch, I fill up a second bubble cup for the second half of the work day. Um, so those are kind of my structured things that happen every day before kind of my even my workout begins. You know, like a lot of people think a workout is like that's, you know, the first thing I do or the most important thing I do, but there's a lot of little things that I do throughout the day that lead up to my workout. And actually my workout happens after my work day. So for me working from home, my workout serves as my mental commute from work. So it separates my work day from my post work work day, whatever. How <laughs> So my workout is that for me. And it's just a mental decompression from everything from the work day. And it kind of just gets me ready to say, all right, out of work mode into just hangout mode, cook dinner with my boyfriend. Like, you know, it's that I need that mental separation. And so my workout serves as that for me. And then, you know, dinner and hanging out and just kind of the normal stuff I think that people do after work. I don't know. <laughs> but, so that's kind of a day in the life for me. But Renata, what does yours look like? I'm sure very different with three kiddos. <laughs> no, basically exactly the same. I just basically walk the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm so glad that you asked this question, Mary, because 
for me, I feel like it's taken many, many years to get into a routine that feels really good, not just for my physical well-being, but also for my mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. So you guys know me. I love to make sure that I'm looking at my life from a holistic standpoint and making sure that I'm really filling my cup. So it's taken some time, but I really feel like I've gotten into an incredible groove. In the mornings, I wake up before everybody else gets up. So that's usually around 5 a.m. And I fill my cup first. So I do five minutes of meditation and I also write in my journal. This is all to do with making sure I'm essentially setting my GPS for the day. I'm not in a responding mode all the time. I'm really being in a thoughtful, mindful creation mode. Um, So I want to make sure that me, my brain, my emotional health is really on point first thing in the the morning. So I write in my journal, my goals. And also how I'm going to be today. So this is important for me because it's super interesting. You know, when life happens around us, especially when it's super challenging, it's easy to to just like have a really like angry reaction or to have a stressed out reaction. But if I set my GPS in the morning, it allows me to be really thoughtful and mindful. Like even if these things happen, I'm going to remember that I'm going to be really kind today or I'm going to be really patient today. So that's all to do with my mental, emotional, and spiritual health first thing in the morning. Then I do a workout. I either go to a gym or I go outside or I work out at home. And so that is the physical health that's really getting, you know, my regressions out. Maybe if I'm going boxing or I'm working on my dance cardio, which you guys know that I love. Um, So that is where my workout comes in. Now, the other places that my workouts happen are really when I'm walking the kids to and from school. So we live about 10 minutes away from school walking time. Um, And so it's a really great, number one, break for me during the day to go and pick them up after school, but also a great bonding time. So, you know, even as we're walking to or from school, we're chatting about the day, we're talking about different things and creating that those memories, creating those bonds with my kids is really important for once again, filling my cup in all the different ways that make me to feel more joy and to have more pleasure in my life. So then once I come back home, really it's about work. It's about connecting with amazing clients like Mary um, and sharing <laughs> lots of goodness around nutrition and how you can incorporate it into your life. For me, what I do is just like Mackenzie, I have a big water bottle sitting next to me all the time uh, that I'm filling up constantly. And I also make sure that I'm getting up every hour just to like, you know, go to the restroom, go get some more water, taking a little break from the computer because I found that that helped me to be more productive. Um, and then I have usually a lunch break, which is funnily enough, I don't watch Real Housewives, but I do watch <laughs> something. <laughs> So that's always really fun is that mental break. And then after school, like I mentioned, I'm picking up the kids, we're having snacks, we're doing homework together. And that's pretty much where my day may end unless I have a couple more calls after that. Um, My nighttime routine is something that I'm still continuing to work on, but a lot of it is around, you know, disconnection from work as much as possible and reconnection with the family. So it's once again, it's about that, you know, the mental health, the emotional health, the spiritual health of being in the community, whether that be your friend circle or your family circle, pouring time and energy into that is so important for my health as well. Does that help, Mary? Yes. I have a couple follow-up questions. What are you watching? (laughs) Like get your on your lunch break. What are you watching? Yes. Okay. So I am obsessed with this YouTube show called Hot Ones. So it's an interview show where they have celebrities or sports people on and they interview them. But at the same time, they're eating progressively hotter and hotter chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good. Gordon Ramsay was on there and he literally could not handle the heat of any of the chicken wings. And it was the most hilarious thing because he has all these things he's trying to do to stop the heat while also being asked really good and thoughtful interview questions. Lizzo's done episodes, which was so like empowering for women. Um, There's been so many amazing people on there. So go and check that out because it's, it's a great, almost guilty pleasure during lunch. Okay. So then for my second follow up question is what time do you go to bed? Both of you. Next. So I usually go to bed between 10 and 1030. And that's the actual act of going to bed, like up to the bed. But typically (laughs) I fall asleep on the couch anytime between like 830 (laughs) and 930. (laughs) I am such a lightweight in terms of like staying awake. I need a full 
eight hours of sleep or I am a total bear. And the dog gets up sometime between six and seven. So like I, it's like Cinderella where I turn into a pumpkin or whatever, like that happens to me. And so, yeah, that's my bedtime versus what time I go to sleep are different. (laughs) (laughs) So can I just, before Renata answers this question, it, what I, I was wondering if it was just me, but clearly it's not falling asleep on the couch. And then like, why am I not just going to bed at eight 30? Because I'm clearly tired enough to go to bed. Yeah. Well, part of it too, for, for me is like, I don't know, like just hanging out with my boyfriend, I'm sure for you guys, like with your family or your significant yeah. other after the kids go to bed is like that time. Sometimes I fall asleep at eight 30 and then other times I get like an extra hour of hanging out with him if I don't fall right. asleep. That early. Right. <laughs> so it's kind of just like that quality time and getting more of it on nights that yeah. I don't fall asleep so early. So I think that's the resistance. I mean, sure, we could, I could just go upstairs and get ready for bed at eight and fall asleep by 830. I'd probably be fine. But right. yeah, I just, I think I would rather have that time. That with time. Him, yep. So. Yep. And the couch is really comfortable. It's true. <laughs> I mean, true. I don't make the rules. It just is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about you, Renata? Um, so I usually Same. go to bed, right. But like I'm trying to be really good about my bedtime because I am the fall asleep on the couch person. And then I will wake up and it will be like two o'clock in the morning. I'll be like, oh, I should actually like get into bed. <laughs> but usually I'm falling asleep around like 11. On the couch or in bed or yes? It varies, <laughs> it varies. I mean, so sometimes I will be really good and like get into bed. And then other times I will be watch- watching a show. This is of no reflection on the show. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. <laughs> But then sometimes I'll fall asleep while we're watching a show. And the next day I'll have to ask my husband and be like, so what happened at the end? Like, do I need to rewatch it or can you just tell me? (laughs) I'm pretty sure we can all say that that's happened to us before. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Oh, I will say that hilariously, um, my sister-in-law and I were talking about this. And so she wants to like fall asleep on the couch while they're watching something but she's so cognizant of it that every so often while she's asleep, she'll actually make a noise, like a noise like you would if you were watching it. But just so her <laughs> husband doesn't pick up on the fact that she falls asleep. So she'll be like, mmm, oh, wow. Like in her sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed. A little bit I'm, impressed. I'm really impressed. I'm, yeah. I'm really impressed. It doesn't take much for me to be impressed, clearly. <laughs> Hey, you said you were impressed oh, by me. I am totally always. <laughs> yes. I'm impressed that you're going to bed at 11 and getting up at five every morning. Like that's impressive to me. Like, yes, I'm a robot though. You are. It's a true story. <laughs> I'm just plugging myself into charge really. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So one thing Renata that you said about your day, um, when you are walking your kids to school, like you're using that time as a time to connect with them. So I really feel like that's a like important thing to think about as you're thinking about your day is how can I make this experience or this, what is happening right now? How can I elevate this to make this fill my cup or make me healthier or do make me feel good in the moment right so Mm. like for you know every day you have to do these things that we've set our life up to be and if I decide that breakfast with my kids is going to be a great positive fun experience then that's that's going to fill my cup right so I'm deciding that and um creating that for my family so I think it's really important that looking at different parts of your day and how how can we create these things in our life to support the person we want to become right so 100 percent. yeah yeah I think that it's really important for us especially because like we're either moms of humans or of animals we're working women like we have lots of responsibilities on our proverbial plate and it's so easy to allow that to dictate your day. It's easy to allow that to really drain you over time. And this is one of the things that I believe we've spoken about in the past, but 
I've seen so many women feel so exhausted and at a loss about Mm -hmm. how their lives are going because they're giving so much to everybody else, to everything else. And it leaves very little time for you to pour back into you. And I've been there. I've been to the point where I was so resentful of, Mm -hmm. you know, my husband or other people, my friends or my kids, because I just was like, I'm doing everything for you guys. And for what, you know? And I think that the shift happened for me when I realized, just like you mentioned, that you can make a choice on whatever that moment is that you're facing that's right in front of you. And if that choice is to really be in the moment and really like savor what's happening around you and make it the best moment, then imagine how incredible your life could be because it's just that enjoyment of that particular time that really pours back into your proverbial cup and helps you feel that fullness and zest for life that perhaps you've been missing. So filling your cup in whatever way that you can do it. And I love that we've gone through all of our days because we've shown such great examples of what that could look like. And you, it could be different for you and that's beautiful and amazing, but pour back into you, give yourself that joy and pleasure and enjoyment that you've been searching for and see your life unfold in the most amazing ways. Yes, I love that. It's, I mean, I've heard it expressed in different ways, you know, making that choice, you can live by default or by design. So in essence, say you have to commute every day for work. Well, you could dread your commute and complain about the traffic and dread, you know, all every part of it, like this takes so much time out of my day and all that. Or you could take, you know, 20 minutes of it and call a friend or a family member and catch up with them. Or you could listen to a podcast that really fills you up or is something that you're super interested in. Like you can choose to make it just the default, whatever it is that first time is typically then what carries on, whether it's a habit or a routine or the way that you take to work or whatever it is. If once you do it once or twice, then that's just kind of like, oh, this is just what I do but you can actually make the choice to change it. You can, it's actually James Clear talks about engineering your environment. So we Mm -hmm. all have to go to work. We all have, you have to sit down, I think three times a day or twice if they're in school to feed your kids. Well, is it something that you're going to be like, I have to do all this again and I have to do all the dishes again, or is it going to be, how can I show my kids to feed themselves and, you know, teach Mm -hmm. them about nutrition and catch up with them about their day and all those things. It's, it's, yeah, just living, like Renata said, in the moment, but you, it has to be a conscious choice to do that. So you can take all those, every opportunity is a choice that you can make and it, you can, or you can let it be the default of whatever it it normally is. And when you're aware of it and you make the choice, typically that's when it ends up being something that fills your cup a little bit more. I love that. Yes, me too. One thing I, one, one quick thing to add when you're on your commute, that's a great chance to practice your breath work or your breathing or your muscle relaxation, like full body muscle relaxation, like noticing in your body. It's a great time to come back into yourself because you're most times alone in your car <laughs> and maybe stopped, right? Like, I, and driving is kind of a second nature thing. We just know what to do. And so it would be a great time to practice that and actually breathing any time of day we're waiting in line at the grocery store anything that you're doing that you're waiting on something um, coming back and just taking some deep breaths just coming back into yourself is just so life-giving love it as I just took a big deep breath (laughs) (laughs) breathing is always a good thing that's what I just my children just respond so well to these breathing things. If when we're, when we're having meltdown, we just take some big deep breaths and usually we can come back from it. So breathing is just so important. Love it. So, yeah. so good. Well, thank you, Mary, so much for this question. We yeah. loved having you. Thanks on. for having me. It's going to be again soon. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs>